Tuan Puan Puan yang saya hormati sekalian, salam sejahtera, salam reformasi, kembali dan cawang sang hao. Kau tahu tak? I am truly happy to be here this evening with all of you at this uh, 87th, I understand, 87th annual dinner for to celebrate and give recognition to the most, probably the most important group of people in society, our teachers. For someone like myself, a member of the political opposition, it is even more significant because it is only the Chinese schools and the Tamil schools and the Scholar Agama that invite us to their functions. <laughs> it is ironic that after more than two years of being elected as a first time member of parliament that I have yet to be invited to any function, whether PIBG or otherwise, of a national school. It shows the distance that we still have to travel in the journey to transform our country and the search for justice in our country. It is unfortunate that those who run the country at the federal level are still not able to handle politics and have a discourse with us and allow us that space and democratic space that we deserve. There is still too much insecurity in the air. But that is why being present this evening with all of you is uh, even more significant. And for me personally, the event today where we, where we recognize and respect our teachers is particularly significant. People of my generation, I'm sure Tan Sri Datuk's generation, uh, the so-called older generation, appreciate our teachers. If you ask many of us, who were the people who shaped our lives? Who were the people who left an impact on our lives? Many of us answer with our teachers' names. We will name the person. We remember the impact they had on us when we were young. And this is something we want to carry on with. We want even the younger generation to appreciate the teachers. And this is why evenings like this are very important. And it is, it is uh, with great pleasure I note that Kui Chai is doing this not just for the first or second time, for the 80 seven time and this is very significant. Now earlier Mr. Lee spoke about the efforts of the school of which I too to build its school and its uh, request for funds from the state government. Uh, I was just mentioning to Tansri Nato Lim just now uh, dinner is not always free, obviously. <laughs> but that was a joke, eh? just for the record. I, um, I have great pleasure in announcing on behalf of YB Elizabeth Wong, who has discussed this with the State Expo and the State Government. And uh, we can't give you the sum of money that, uh, that was requested, but there is already a commitment to give 50,000 ringgit immediately to the school building fund. That is for this year. And for next year, there will be more, if there is an application. How much, I can't promise, but there will be more. Now, I want to explain something. This has been a policy of the Slavo government from the day the new Slavo government started in March 08. 
in zero in the 2008, 2009, this year, and every year, from even from next year, we are giving four million to help the Chinese schools, four million to Tamil schools, and four million to Scholar Agama. This has been given every year and distributed in a fair, uh, in the fairest possible manner to as many schools as possible. Now, some of you may say. 4 million doesn't sound like very much. It's true. 4 million is not a big sum of money. Your school hall is going to cost you 3 million. But what we want to say to you is also this. The budget, the annual budget of the Slango government is 1.4 billion ringgit, approximately. Now the budget, the federal budget, which we approved in parliament last year, which the federal government uses to disperse funds, is 200 billion ringgit. That is the difference. And from that sum, we approved the biggest allocation for education, which was 27 billion ringgit. Why I mention these figures is to show you that for the Slango government to give just 4 million just to Chinese schools is the equivalent of the federal government giving about 600 million to Chinese schools. Now ask yourself, has the federal government ever done that? And I think we all know the answer. So the, it is not so much the amount, it is to show that we have a commitment to support education. And I think that is important. This 50,000 is not the decision of an individual. It is not the decision of an adult, not the decision of Elizabeth Wong, not the decision of myself taking some money out from our allocation. It is the decision of the state to show its commitment to support the Chinese schools, the Tamil schools, to support education, even though it is not the role of the state government to support education. Education is a federal responsibility, but we also want to show our commitment. We want to show what we will do if one day we are given the responsibility of federal government. And as I said earlier, this is not just for the Chinese schools, this is also for the Tamil school movement, Tamil schools and also for the religious schools. We're spreading the money across, all across the board. Now, the policy of the Slango government is not just about handing out cash. We recognize, as Mr. Lee has rightly pointed out, there is a real problem about overcrowding, in the, especially in the Chinese schools, especially in the urban schools. This problem is also affecting the Tamil schools, especially those in the urban areas. Now, we know the ratios, and I would also like to tell you that we raise this in Parliament every session, and we ask the questions, when are you going to increase the number of schools? And this is repeatedly asked. But unfortunately, there is silence coming from the federal government. As Mr. Lee has said, in principle, the commitment is there to increase the number of schools. Eight school sites have been identified in the district of Katani. And this process will go on also for the other districts. But, and I just want to put this back in the sense that I don't want to raise expectations about how fast it will happen. We have obstacles like bureaucrats. We have two kinds of obstacles. One is political, the other is bureaucratic. The bureaucratic kind of obstacle is this. We have the bureaucrats telling us that the National Land Council permission is required. They create excuses when actually these things are nonsensical. Land is a state matter and there is really no need to go to the National Land Council for any kind of permission. But this is the reality also of Malaysian politics. In Perak, in the year 2008, after the Pakatan riot, Perak government started converting QALs to freehold for the, uh, the new villages. The National Land Council passed a policy to stop such conversions. 
Why I am saying this is to just give you a sense of some of the obstacles that we face. The bureaucrats try to slow us down and our political components also try to use these issues to try and slow us down. But I want to reiterate to all of you, the commitment is there. We recognize the problem. The problem can only be solved with new and more schools. There is no question about that. There is no other solution. We cannot have our schools going on with ratios like 4,000 over students per school. Three times what the national school system is undergoing. And these changes will be done. And Mr. Lee, I will say this, we will not be doing this on the eve of the general election number 30. That we will say.